Well, there, everybody, um, in this lesson, what we really want to understand is what actually happens uh, when you actually take your card uh, and swipe it to buy something like a coffee. Um, with me here, I've got a few different debit cards. I've got my uh, Charles Schwab debit card. It's a Visa debit card. I've got Chase Sapphire um, a Visa card, this is, which is a credit card. Um, and finally, I've got my branch debit card, um, which is powered by MasterCard. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to try to understand what happens any time that I actually uh, swipe this card and how the money all moves. How does the money get taken from my account uh, and given to the coffee shop um, and kind of go through it. So let's talk a little bit about the payments ecosystem. Um, and there's, it could be kind of complicated, but what I want to do is take this and divide it into different parts um, so that it's easier for you to understand. Um, and so one of the first things that we have to think about is for any card-based payment to happen, you first of all need a person that wants to make a payment, so this be you, um, and you need a way to pay. So again, like I, I mentioned before, here's a, a debit card. It's a physical debit card that I've got in my hand, but also um, it could be done as a virtual card or um, as you can see here, it's in my Apple Pay wallet um, that I can use to go ahead and tap and pay. Um, but again, uh, you need some sort of instrument that's issued by a bank, um, which is referred to as the issuing bank that will be able to um, provide the instrument in which to pay. So if you look on the back of any of these cards, you'll be able to see that, all right, um, the branch card is actually issued by Evolve, Evolve Bank and Trust. Uh, and then obviously my Charles Schwab card was uh, issued by Charles Schwab Bank and the Chase card was uh, issued by Chase Bank. Um, and so uh, you need an issuing bank and you need a card. And um, when you have that, you need somebody that is able to process that actual card. And that's what's referred to as the issuer processor. And the issuer processor is um, the technology layer that sits in between the bank and uh, the network, which would be either Visa or MasterCard, Discover, etc. Um, and what they have is they've got a unique piece of hardware that allows you to connect very quickly uh, with the card networks and it communicates with um, the, the issuing bank. Finally, um, after that, what we need is we need a place that sells something, right? So in our case, it's the coffee shop. So the coffee shop sells coffee and they are what's referred to as the merchant. Um, the merchant will typically have some sort of like hardware um, that's there that allows you to accept the payment. So, um, you know, they might have some sort of uh, point of sale system or like a cash register and they'll have like a little device that um, sits in front that you can use to either tap your card or swipe your card or again, um, when you insert the, the chip in, it's referred to as dipping your card. Um, so they will have all that hardware and that um, typically is um, coming from a processor called the acquirer. Um, so the acquirer has the acquiring bank. And so for every merchant, they're going to have a acquiring bank that they use to be able to collect payment. Um, and they process this transaction through an acquirer processor. So similar like the other side where the cardholder has the issuer processor that they work with. On this side, the merchant is working with the acquirer processor. And the acquirer processor takes information off of that card, they send it to Visa or MasterCard, and then that's what actually makes the connection happen. So that's, those are the two sides of the main equation, but what's in the middle is the payment network, or it's sometimes referred to as a card scheme. Um, but in, in the US, uh, primarily it's Visa and MasterCard are the open uh, card schemes, and then you also have Discover American Express. Um, there as well that we'll talk about in a later chapter uh, what the distinction is um, but they are the ones that sit right in the middle and process the transactions back and forth um, so what we'll do is let's go in and take a real-life example um, so we're gonna kick this off by introducing our um, hero in this uh, story his name is Emmett um, who looks kind of like me <laughs> um, and Emmett is actually craving a mocha and he, he really enjoys getting it from his favorite coffee shop called Bucks of Star. 
uh, coffee shop that's actually based in the um, Embarcadero Center um, in San Francisco. So he is having his uh, walk to uh, work and he decides he really would love to get a, a, an amazing mocha from Bucks of Star. Um, and he walks in. He walks in and he asks um, the barista, uh, could I please get a medium-sized mocha, please? Uh, and they, the, the barista says, great. It's going to be $4.75. So what does Emmett do? So Emmett goes ahead and he takes out um, his MasterCard debit card that's issued by Moneybin Bank. Um, and he takes that card and he puts it into the card reader that's sitting there um, at the um, uh, 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 coffee shop. And what he's doing is he's actually dipping the card in. So he's putting the card in with the chip in first, uh, which is referred to as dipping. And what happens is that the process starts right there. So it's starting the authorization process. Um, so what, what's actually happening here, right? Um, so the $4.75, the, the, the terminal that's sitting there, a box of star actually uses uh, the square terminal to um, accept the payment. So um, that terminal actually sends some information to its acquirer processor. So it says, hey, um, acquirer processor, I've got Emmett here. Um, we are using a um, debit card that comes from Moneybin Bank. Um, it starts with a five. Um, and when we say it's a five, um, it actually denotes that it's a MasterCard. Four will denote a, a, a Visa card. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but um, the acquire processor notices that this is a MasterCard card. It's issued by Moneybin Bank. So what the acquire processor does is it, it actually makes a call to MasterCard because it says, okay, cool, this is a MasterCard card. I'm gonna go ahead and call MasterCard and see if this card, if, if Emmett can actually transact or not. Um, does, is he good for the money, right? So um, then he goes in and um, provides uh, this card information over. Um, and all in the whole while, you know, Emmett is actually waiting. So he, he'll say authorizing typically on the, on the card reader. And typically all this stuff happens within about three, three seconds. Um, and so um, the acquire processor is asking uh, MasterCard, you know, um, does he bank with Money Bin Bank? Is his card active? Does he have enough money? Is he allowed to spend at our coffee shop? Um, or are there any fraud flags that come up, right? So what MasterCard in turn does is that MasterCard notices this is going to Money Bin Bank. So I'm gonna contact the issuer processor that processes for Money Bin Bank. And it asks these, it basically is doing a relay over to um, the issuer processor and says, you know, does does Emmett bank with Money Bin Bank? Is it his card active? Um, does he have enough money in there? Is he allowed to spend money at um, uh, Bucks of Star? And do you see any fraud flags? So it asks the question. So um, the issuer processor picks up this information and then it does, does a bunch of checks. It says, yep, uh, you know, Emmett's got plenty of money in his bank account. He's good to go. We don't have any restrictions for him to buy. Um, at Bucks of Star, I don't see any fraud flags that are happening. The card is active. And once that's good, then the issuer processor relays the approved message to MasterCard. And then MasterCard gets that and then sends an approved message to the acquirer processor. And then finally, the approved message gets sent to the card reader. And on the screen, you'll be able to see that it actually says approved. So once that happens, then Emmett has the option of leaving a tip. So he can go ahead and uh, type in the tip or press a button for the tip. And then after that's happened, everything is approved. Um, on the uh, cash register, the barista will see that everything has been approved and proceeds to hand Emmett his delicious mocha. And once he has that, he's like, wow, this was amazing. Didn't really think that there was all this stuff happening in the background, but I got my mocha and it's absolutely delicious. So. Again, what we just walked through right now is um, just an example of um, what a traditional flow will work, work like. And that's sort of the basis of the payment systems ecosystem and the really the basis for the anatomy of the swipe. And what we'll do in a subsequent chapter is, is kind of talk a little bit about, well, did money actually move 
uh, off of Emmett's account and into um, the account of Bucks of Star. How did that all happen? Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what's all required for Emmett to get a card um, because you know these aren't just like handed out willy-nilly. Um, and then finally, um, we'll talk uh, more about what are some of the distinctions between an issuer processor or acquirer processor. There's other elements. There are things like program managers, um, uh, payment service pr uh, providers, etc. And and also we'll talk a little bit about the distinctions between the networks. So what what's a signature network? What's a, uh, a pin based network? What's the distinction between Amex versus Visa um, and things like that? And so. Um, there's still a lot more that we are going to be talking about, um, but um, hopefully this is a good baseline for you to understand what's actually happening when I take my debit card and swipe it to buy a delicious mocha. So stay tuned. Um, uh, looking forward to catching up with you in the next chapter. Thanks again.